are at the Overbrook Environmental Education Center. It's also called Jazz Tech, which stands for Juveniles in Science and Technology. So the Overbrook Center does quite a number of things. And around the Overbrook property, there is a, a range of what's called green stormwater infrastructure. So this particular one is a stormwater tree trench. And what looks like just a regular trees planted in the ground is actually a place where water, when it rains, is caught from flowing down the street. It enters the trench and then a perforated pipe distributes that water throughout the trench and then the roots of the tree can soak it up. And the this, this stones here that you see and the soil that's just underground allows the rainwater to slowly percolate into the system rather than rushing along the street into a storm sewer. So one of the things we're talking about when we talk about water in the urban cycle and storm water, green storm water infrastructure is making ways for the rain that wants to go down into the groundwater and then into the rivers to flow safely and not just bring lots of trash and sewage. Raw sewage is, you know, when you flush your toilet, that's sewage. So you don't really want that in our water. So the Overbrook Center is built on a former quarry. So it's what was called a brownfield, which means it was used for industry and then it was repurposed in a, an environmental way. And so what we have here is what's called permeable, pervious pavement. So pervious means water can go through. So we've got the street out there, that when, the, when it rains, the water just rushes along and goes into a storm inlet. You know, those gutters you see in the ground. Here, the water can percolate down through. You can see that while it's still rocky and solid, there's more gaps. And then there's down here, you can see actually a uh, kind of a storm inlet. This is, if, it, if it's a lot of water, it can go down into here and then it's in a cistern, which again, collects the water and allows it to slowly percolate down back into the, into the system. So part of green storm water infrastructure is creating ways in a city that are both practical and beautiful to keep storm water from mixing with sewage and going into our river. So we get here, we go through the gate, and we are in the back part. Again, permeable surface, pervious pavement. This is something called a food forest orchard. It's a permaculture concept. We can learn a little bit more about that. But basically it's using this space where again, water is collecting to grow plants that have multi-purposes. So one purpose is it's lovely. Another purpose is it grows fruit. So as you can see, we've got apples growing here. We had strawberries growing here earlier. This is a peach tree. This is also a peach tree. We've got a fig tree back here. We've got plants that attract insects and insects are needed to pollinate fruit. So an orchard is always better when it has plants that attract pollinators. Then it also has trees, which are clean air machines. So we haven't talked that much about the, how air is kept fresh and clean and cool by having trees, but that is something that we will talk about. So just keep that in mind. This is a fig tree. I'm going to find a couple of little figs. I saw some last week when I was here. Um, here, they're pretty little still, but um, they will grow big. Okay, so now we're going to go up to, actually, let's look at a little bit more of the green stormwater infrastructure on this trip. So this space is, we get through another gate. And this here is a is called a bio retention basin. So bio means biologic, um, means something living. Retention means it holds something in, it retains, and it captures and filters rainwater runoff. So all this area up, I don't know if you can see the elevation, everything above that, which is a whole property behind and the part of the property 
all the water will run naturally down. Water always runs downhill, downstream from high to low. So it comes down into this area and then you can see sort of a kidney shaped, um, there's like a border that looks like a curb that's flat. And then this area is, allows, again, it's a drainage system. It's got layers of rock, thin layer of soil. The basin captures and filters and cools the warm surface water and then it returns it back to the earth. So it's designed to capture runoff so that the runoff doesn't bring um, pollution or trash again out to the road and down into the rivers full of trash. It actually percolates through the soil and goes into the groundwater. So while we're here, we're going to keep walking. The Overbrook Center has a lot going on and we're going to go up and look at their urban farm after. But right now, make sure it was still working, we're going to go through yet another gate. Yes. So here is a space that I will uh, have some pictures of what it looked like before. This is a new space. This used to be a garage and it used to be uh, it used to be full of cars and they used to clean cars and you know fix cars up that kind of garage and now it's going to be turned into an urban farm and it's about an acre so an acre is a lot of space get a good sense so this is going to have um, educational facilities and places to maybe store and cook food this area is going to be some garden spaces. We're going to have a big high tunnel, which is a greenhouse-like structure. We're going to go visit a high tunnel in a minute. So you can see these are the um, holes in the ground are where the poles are going to go that are going to be holding up the support for the high tunnel. And the back is going to be an open space for kids to play. So this is just a, a bit of before. And what's going to happen is all these surrounding properties that are higher than this, um, the water naturally wants to drain down into here. And so they're going to create, it's going to be a project with civil engineers and um, water specialists and landscape architects. And they're going to design a series of green stormwater infrastructure um, solutions to all the runoff from multiple properties. So one of the things that the city is trying to encourage homeowners and businesses to do is come up with creative solutions to make sure that stormwater is being captured, collected, slowed down so that on a big storm event, we don't end up with raw sewage in our waterways. Again, raw sewage is flushing the toilet, going down into a pipe, which should go to the water treatment plant. But if there's a big storm event, it gets mingled with a lot of w water and then it's too much for the um, water treatment plant. And so it ends up in the river and then that ends up in the, it might, might end up in the, in the, um, the Wishicken Creek. It might end up in the Tocony, 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 Tocony Creek. It might end up in the Perkyoman. It might end up um, in, one of the creeks that feeds into the Schuylkill or the Delaware, and we don't want that water to be full of sewage. Gross. So one other green stormwater infrastructure feature that is um, here at the, uh, at the Overbrook Center is something called a flow-through planter. So what that means is these planters here along the edge of this building, they are full of soil. And unlike some planters that you'll see, they do not have bottoms. And the water can flow directly through, again, to perforated pipes that then can direct the water slowly percolating through underground into the ground, groundwater. So these flow through planters are both practical. So on the edge of these, this building, the water runs off like it does on every building. Often there's gutters, and instead of going into a gutter and then having the water rush down to a downspout, it rushes down and then it's feeding these plants. This is actually a pomegranate tree forming little pomegranates. Oops, you can't really see the flowers. Here we go. This one is forming a, a pomegranate. Here's one. You can see the flower and then the pomegranate at the edge. So, you know, we're using the water that comes off the edge 
in a practical way and it's also keeping the water in our rivers cleaner through a solution like a flow through planter. So overall we have the pervious pavement in the parking spots. So again, that's at the lower part. So the, in the driveway goes slightly downhill and at the bottom there's the pervious driveway. So the water percolates there. Any overflow goes into that little dip where the orchard is collecting the water to grow edible crops and it's a perennial edible crop. So it's crops that bear, once you plant them will produce food year after year after year. So we've got some fruit trees, some shrubs, some herbs. And so this space has flow through planters out front. It has pervious pavement. It has flow through planters. It has a bio retention basin. And there's going to be a whole bunch of new green stormwater infrastructure on the new space. And so there's things to keep your eye on. There's going to be jobs working, helping create some of those spaces. So this is things to know. So now we're going to walk up to what's called this high tunnel. And this is a really unusual high tunnel because it's upstairs. And it's actually built on top of some old storage things for when this used to be a quarry. So we get to the high tunnel and it looks a little bit like a greenhouse. And inside it's a little it's about as warm as it is outside it's a little warmer it's temperature controlled and we have so much happening we have cucumbers growing we have sweet potatoes growing we have beans growing up over this trellis beautifully we have squash dozens of squash yellow squash which I actually need to harvest we have on this side over here, tomatoes and eggplant and peppers. So let's just see what we see. I see tomatoes. I see beautiful purple peppers. I see some beautiful eggplant. Oh, I see some more peppers looking fantastic. I see lots of weeds. So I'm actually here today to do some work in here. I'm gonna do some weeding. So this eggplant is not looking fantastic. These leaves, um, are looking what I would call sclerotic, meaning that you know there's something with the veins not looking quite right. I'm going to have to do a little research to find out what. Ooh, it looks like the first tomatoes are ready. And eggplants, let's see. Tomatoes, and then these are potatoes growing like crazy over here. So this high tunnel is quite productive. It was planted in early April, and things are much farther along than they are planted other places in early April because the conditions in here are more controlled, it gets a little bit warmer. So the warm weather crops especially are doing really well. The, some of these cooler weather crops are starting to struggle. But again, this is chard. And then these are carrots. Again, needing a good weeding. I'll take a picture after I do some weeding. And then uh, beets. And you can see that actually we look down in here, we'll probably see some baby beets. Can you see the, the young beets in there? Um, I'm not sure how good the focusing is. So the beets are not quite big enough and they need to be thinned out. So when you, when you grow crops, if they're too close together, neither of the roots can form. So I'm going to have to pull out some every other one. And then these beet greens, are delicious and edible and they are actually the same family as this plant here chard so chard is the same family as beets and in beets you eat the swollen root and the greens and in chard grows bigger and more lush greens but exactly the same same flavor same growing condition okay so i'm going to get to work more soon